Welcome to your first year of teaching. This year will test you more than anything you've ever done. It will deplete all your energy, bring you to tears, make you question every talent and skill you thought you had, but it will leave you better and stronger than you are today. Advice is available everywhere and some of it very good. Most of those tips will work very well if you follow this one essential rule. Surround yourself with good people. If you find positive, supportive, energetic teachers in your school, stick close to them. You will improve your job satisfaction more than any other strategy. Just like a young seedling growing in a garden, thriving your first year depends largely on who you plant yourself next to. Experienced gardeners follow a concept called companion planting, placing certain vegetables and plants near each other to improve growth. Amongst all companion plants, the marigold is the best. It protects a wide variety of plants from pests and harmful weeds. If you plant a marigold beside any garden vegetable, it will grow big, healthy, protected, and encouraged by its marigold. Marigolds exist in our schools, encouraging, supporting, and nurturing our teachers. If you can find at least one marigold in your school, stay close to them and you will grow. Find more than one, you will positively thrive. You may be lucky enough to be planted close to a marigold. It may be a mentor or a co-teacher or even a faculty member. If not, you may have to seek them out. You can identify them by the way they greet you on arrival or by the way you feel when you're around them. How will you know who is a marigold? Are you calmer and helpful when you're around them? Are you comfortable with asking questions? even the silly ones. If you feel good around the person, chances are they have some marigold qualities. Once you have identified your marigolds, spend some time with them. If you're having a bad day, go to your marigolds, seek them out, connect with them. If your school is toxic, you may have to find your marigold in another school. Make an effort, I promise you, it's worth the trouble. Beware of the walnut trees. While seeking out marigolds, take note of the walnut trees. Walnut trees give off a toxic substance that can inhibit growth and ultimately kill the nearby plants. If your school is unfortunate, walnut trees may be abundant. Who are the walnut trees on campus? Their take on kids is negative. Their take on administration is negative. Being around them makes you feel negative. Walnut trees are poisonous. If you don't avoid them, they will start to infect you and soon you'll dislike teaching just as much as they do. Doing this may be a challenge. Your supervisor or teacher partner might be a walnut tree. You might even work in a whole team of walnut trees. Touching base with your marigolds will help you flush out the toxins that walnut trees create. If you can identify the walnut trees, they will have far less of an impact on you. Here we have Kid Hayden Kate, who will snore every time you share a positive anecdote about your students. Spend enough time with her and you'll believe every single one of them is a lion cheating little sneak and you're a fool if you think otherwise. Here's retirement Ronnie, who regularly reports on how many years he has left and he's out of here. He then adds with a chuckle that you have about 30, right? Ronnie will find your enthusiasm about school cute but then he'll tell you, just wait, it'll wear off. Harriet, who hates the principal, well, that's self-explanatory. My time Mary, who counts the number of minutes she has for lunch, complains about serving one more minute on lunch duty, and knows precisely what time she's legally required to be in the building each day, not a minute earlier. And finally, good old days Dorothy, who hates anything new and never fails to mention how much better things used to be. Not everyone is all marigold or all walnuts. There will be some in the building who make you happy. Go to them for a mood boost. Some who aren't terribly good at the teaching part, but they love the kids to death. Seek them out when you need to be reminded how much you love the kids too. Others will take care of you, encourage you to rest and not to beat yourself up. Learn who has what marigold qualities and get what you can from each of them. Be vigilant during professional development days. 
If you find yourself in a forest of walnut trees and the presenter asks to perform a task, the trees will slowly turn toward the center with negative comments dropping off their branches like walnuts whacking the table. It won't matter how interesting the activity might be, as soon as they huddle up, it will be nothing but whining. When this happens, recognize it. Hold tight to your roots and remember your marigolds. Try to find compassion for the walnut trees. Their toxicity comes from a place of real pain. They themselves have been influenced by other walnut trees who came before them. In reality, teaching is a ridiculously hard job. Some say almost as impossible as climbing Mount Everest. Even though you are aware of this difficulty, you have taken on this challenge. Now it is time for you to decide who would you rather climb this mountain with? Your first option is Mr. Walter Nutt, who starts by asking why in the world would you want to do something like this? Do you know how many have failed before you? Or you can choose Miss Marigold, who congratulates you on your courage, sits down with you to map out some important strategies, and finishes by saying, it's a crazy hard task, but you know what? We're gonna reach the top of this mountain. It's up to you. What do you want your journey to look like? Find your marigold and conquer that mountain. Welcome to your first year of teaching. You are going to do a